Hey guys, quick word before I head to church, quick but powerful word. Um, God is saying there's been a release in the spirit which released things, blessings, promises in the natural. There's been a release. This morning, there was a release in the spirit that has released promises, blessings, generational blessings, generational wealth, generational health, in the natural okay and this word is for so many people in this season there has been a release in the spirit and that release in the spirit has released promises and generational blessings and just an abundance in the natural okay and many of you guys are going to see that in the weeks and months to come okay there has been a release so I'm going to give you guys this dream really quick, give you the interpretation, and I'm going to head to church, okay? Because it was so powerful. I had this dream in the wee hours of this morning. I felt restless. I could not sleep, right? I went to sleep a little after 11 p.m. last night, and I had a stiff neck. I just body aches like I could not sleep throughout the night. And I kept dreaming, waking up, recording dreams. And I'm not going to release all of the dreams to you. I'm just going to release the very last one. But um, I just could not sleep. And I was asking God, why am I so restless? I'm like, what is going on? And he gave me this very last dream of the night. I had to have had this dream around three or four in the morning. Okay. And again, God is saying there has been a major release in the spirit. And it has caused there to be a release in the natural, a release of promises, of blessings that Satan has been holding on to, fighting, like contending with the Lord's angels, trying to steal your blessings, trying to steal your promises, but he could not because God holds the ultimate power. Even the power that Satan has, he gets that from God, which is why he can't even do anything or mess with anybody without getting God's permission first. Okay, God is the king of kings, okay? Many times in scripture, Satan is referred to as the prince of the air, as the prince of darkness, you know? He's referred to as the prince because there is only one king, and that is the Lord God, okay? He's the king of kings, God of gods, okay? <laughs> so let me get into this dream, and I should have um, put my phone on airplane mode because I have people texting me, and I don't want to get distracted. Um... But in this dream, my face is itching. Holy Spirit, sorry, guys. Sorry, not sorry. Ugh, Lord, <laughs> what is happening? Okay, in this dream, I was in a two-story house and it was an old, like, wooden type of house, right? And I was in this house with my little niece, Kyra. Okay, my niece, Kyra, is not little anymore. But in this dream, she looked to be about three or four years old. Okay, but in real life, my niece is uh, 13. I believe she's 12 or 13, maybe 14. No, she's like 12 or 13. But in this dream, she was a little girl. She was like three, four, could have been five years old. Okay, um, maybe four or five. That's what her age bracket, that's what it seemed like in this dream. But she was younger. Her name's Kyra. We're in this two-story wooden house, right? And I put Kyra in the bathtub to take a bath. So she's taking a bath and as she's taking a bath, I'm going um, downstairs and just walking around the house and there was just an uneasiness in this house. Like it just felt old and dark, right? So I'm just doing, you know, certain things around the house and I come back to check on Kyra and I'm looking for her in different rooms and she's in this one room uh, trying to get her little laptop to so she can watch something as she's taking a bath or whatever. And she tells me, she's like, there was a wind. She's like, there was a wind that just closed my door. You know, it was moving the door. And I was like, a wind? She's like, yeah, it was like a wind, like air just moved my door, right? And I began to look around and lights that weren't on before were now turned on, right? And I remember just knowing there's a dark presence here, like Satan is here, like there is darkness in this house. And I began to scream, 
And I said, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. I rebuke you in the name of Yeshua. I rebuke you in the name of Jehovah Jireh. And I just went to calling every name I can think of that the Lord goes by. And I was screaming to the top of my lungs. And as I'm um, rebuking him, my head began to have a pressure. So now I'm in the dream and I'm holding my head because it was like something was squeezing my head really tight. So I'm holding my head and I'm still, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Satan, I rebuke you in the name of Yeshua. I rebuke you in the name of Jehovah Jireh. And I'm holding my head and I'm screaming. And I said, <laughs> I said very loud, I said, Satan, you only have one name. God goes by many names. As in to say like he's a nobody. And I was screaming. And instantly, instantly guys, the pressure from my head began to release. And I just felt a release over my body. And I knew there was a letting go. I knew it was finished. I knew in the dream that I had defeated darkness with the word of God. With, by just saying God's name, by rebuking darkness, I knew I felt a release over my whole body. And that was the end of the dream. Okay, when I woke up, the stiff neck that I had on this side for the past few days was gone. I felt a release over my whole entire body. I felt a release in the atmosphere and I knew something had released. Something was broken. Chains were broken. And God began to minister to me that there's been a release in the spirit. And with that release in the spirit is a release in the natural, okay? And what the Lord was showing by this dream by using my, my niece Kyra, we're in this old like wooden type house, okay? Kyra represented generational blessings, okay? It represented God's promises, generational blessings, generational wealth, okay? Things that he's promised to us long ago, but because of the generational curses and the darkness and principalities that have been going on in our family lines for a very long time, he needed Whoever you are, whoever this word is for, he needed you to step up and break those generational curses. So even though these things begin to happen, Satan began to tamper with your, your family line, your generational blessings way before you were even born. He needed somebody to step up and say, Lord, use me because he needed you to break it. Okay, Kyra's name means of the Lord, of the Lord. It also means lady. Okay, so you can look at it as lady of the Lord, but she wasn't her old, her old self, as in her 13 year old self in real life as she is now, she was a baby. And the Lord began to minister to me and tell me that the Lord, not the Lord, I'm sorry, that Satan wanted to kill your promises, kill your family line, the blessings due to your family line. He wanted to kill it in its infancy stage, okay? Similar to how Herod tried to take out Jesus, right? He he had all the the um the male babies killed, all the all the infant babies killed, right? And he wanted to take Jesus out in his infancy stage. He wanted to take the promise out in his infancy stage, in its infancy stage. Okay, the Lord is saying that. Satan wanted to kill your generational promises, your generational wealth, the things that God has for you at its infancy stage, in its infancy stage. He wanted to cut it off. But because God is the God of God, Lord of Lord, kings of kings, he fought for you. He fought for your family line, but he needed you to step up and fight against this darkness. He needed you to step up. He needed to work through you to break these generational curses. Okay, he needed to work through you. And she in the dream, she was in the bathtub, which represented cleansing, how Jesus cleansed us with the word, right? And if you um, read Ephesians 5, verse 26, it says to make her holy, cleansing her with the washing of the water by the word, okay? And in this, um, in this chapter, this verse comes after the Lord is saying, husband, loves your wives, love your wives just as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her to make her holy, cleansing her with the washing of the water by the word. Okay, Jesus died on a cross for us. So we are cleansed. We are made righteous through Jesus dying on a cross for us. He gave his life 
for us. So we are cleansed. We are set free. But we still have to fight against the darkness and principalities in high places in, as we're in this world. We still have to, we, the, the spirit still wrestles against the flesh. Yeah, Jesus died for us, so we're cleansed. Our salvation is complete. But we still have a duty to do here on earth. We still have to walk with the Lord, follow his commands. We have to choose to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Not everybody in our family line has chosen that lifestyle. It's a choice. We all have free will. Jesus already died for us on the cross. He, he did that. He gave the ultimate um, sacrifice, his life. But we still have a choice to make. And some of our family members choose to partner with darkness. And when they partner with darkness, it opens doors. And generational curses just begin to run rampant in the family line. So God had to use you. He had to use you to break it. Okay, there was a release in the spirit this morning. There was a release in the spirit and I know I'm not the only one who felt it. There was a release in the spirit and there has been a release in the natural. Okay, you guys are about to see so many things. Whoever this word is for, it's not for everybody in this season, but there's gonna be so many blessings that you've been waiting for just begin to release. Okay, an, I, an uh, can't even talk right. An Amos 9.13 moment. Everything just happening so quickly. You can't even catch up. You're like, what is going on? There's been a release, guys. Satan tried to kill everything in your family. The generational blessings, wealth, health, promises at its infancy stage. But thank God that you stood up and was like, God, use me. I got to break these things. They have been broken. They have been broken. We were in an old house in this dream. Okay, again, symbolizing generational curses, things that have happened in the family line way before me. This was an old wooden house, okay? We were on the second floor of this house, which symbolized a position of elevation, but still in positions of elevation, when God uses you, you have to fight against this darkness. There's things that need to be broken, okay? And in my family line, God used me to do that. Okay, so I put Kyra in the tub, which again, just symbolized God's um, cleansing over us. He, he sent his son to die for us. We're cleansed, we're free from sin. He's cleansed us with the word. And who he deems clean, no man could deem unclean, okay? But don't you know, Satan is an unclean little creature, okay? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to just wreak havoc in family lines. So I go walk around the house and I'm, trying to check on Kyra, which again, Kyra means lady of the Lord, okay? I go check on her and she's trying to get her laptop, but she's telling me there's a wind. She's like, there's air that she that pushed her door shut, like the bathroom door shut. And she's like, the door was moving, right? And I look around and I see lights on that weren't on, okay? Again, I knew in that moment that there was a demonic presence in that house. Okay, and if you go to Ephesians 2, verse 2, um, Satan is referred to as the prince of the power of the air. In some versions, like the one I'm reading, he's referred to as the ruler um, of the power of the air. And I'm going to read it for you. Um, Ephesians 2, starting at verse 1. And you were dead in your trespasses and sins in which you previously lived according to the ways of this world, according to the ruler of the power of the air. The spirit now working in disobedience, that is referring to Satan being able to wreak havoc here on the earth, okay? He is known as the prince of the power of the air. My niece said, I felt wind, I felt air, move the door, okay? That was the air, the wind was Satan, okay? I look around, lights are on that weren't previously on. He's also referred to as, um, he also comes as close to the light as possible. And excuse my stuttering, I'm trying to rush to get to church. I don't want to be late, but I want to give you guys this word. He's also referred to as um, someone who comes as close to the light as possible. Okay, he tries to mimic the Lord. Okay. He can never mimic the Lord. He can never be God, but he tries to come as closest to it as possible. Immediately, I knew there was a presence in the house and I began to say, I rebuke you, Satan, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, in the name of Jehovah Jireh. Yeshua means God of salvation, the God who rescues. 
Jehovah Jireh means the God who provides. And I began to rebuke him. And I, I said other names, whatever names I could think of that the Lord goes by, I, rebin, I began to rebuke Satan using all of these names. Right. And as I began to do that, my head was squeezing like it was like almost a, a grip was just squeezing my head and I began to hold my head. But as I'm holding my head in the dream, I still I rebuke you say it in the name of Jesus, Yeshua, Jehovah Jireh. And I'm just screaming this. And I, I begin to say, um, saying you only have one name. Jesus has many names. He goes by many names. And I was saying like, he can do many things and I'm screaming. And the pressure began to release. I felt a release, guys. In the dream, I literally felt my head, it was almost like my head was swollen and it just, there was a release. And I knew it was finished. I knew Satan was gone. There was no darkness. I knew I had rebuked him and he had fled and he was done. He was dead. Okay, he was gone. Again, the Lord is saying there has been a release in the spirit, y'all. There has been a release in the spirit. I woke up laughing from this dream because it just cracked me up. I said, Satan, you only have one name. Jesus has many names. As in to say, you're nobody. But Jesus is all these things. You're nothing but darkness. Yeah, you may go by Lucifer and Satan. It all equals darkness. Jesus is a provider. He's salvation. He's everything. And when I said this, like just me replaying this when I woke up, I just started laughing. But I felt so much lighter when I woke up, guys. The, the um, stiffness in my neck was gone. My body aches was gone. I felt a release and I felt God impressed in my spirit. There's been a release in the spirit and that has caused a release in the natural. So I wanted to release this word to you guys before I head to church because it's so powerful. It's so powerful, guys. Um, it's so powerful. Um, there's been a release, y'all. And sorry, not sorry for the stuttering and just uh, feeling like I'm all over the place. I, um, I'm trying to rush to get to church, but I wanted to give you guys this word. So I'm gonna give you guys your morning back. I hope you have a blessed Sunday. And there's been a release, guys. I know I'm not the only one that felt this shift. It happened this morning. There's been a release. And that release comes with relief. Okay? It comes with relief. It wasn't just in the spirit. The, the release in the spirit released things in the natural for whoever this is for. Have a blessed day. Let me go ahead and um, get ready to get out of here. I love you guys. And yeah, be blessed.